Cardinals against the number four Bellarmine University Knights. That's in the nation. They're the number one seed in the tournament, and they lead 34-32 despite foul trouble, and we'll get to all of that in a moment. But first, it is an honor to... I uh, get to meet Homer Drew. I've heard so much about you, Coach, through the years. With uh, And, of course, growing up watching the NCAA tournament, the great runs you had at Valparaiso. How are you? Uh, uh, first of all, I know you, you and your wife both announced you had cancer at the same time. Let's get started with that. How are you both? Doing both very well. Um, my wife had it much more difficult than I because she had bladder cancer and then breast cancer. So she's been very courageous uh, through all of this. And then I had the prostate cancer and mine was simple it was in and out in one day and and thank the lord that both of us are right now cancer free so well it was nice to meet her as well i always like to meet the wives it says so much (laughs) they're the backbone they're the ones who really deserve the credit rick you're very accurate on that exactly right i got a uh, when i started announcing we're going to have you in the first half i got an email from a a listener who said they wanted to ask coach drew a question and so i'm going to ask that one okay that's fine the question was uh would you have coach drew explain why he didn't pass the ball to me as much as i passed it to him and that was from coach holly (laughs) (laughs) because you guys played together for three years we did and it was marvelous and he did help me a a great deal in sharing the basketball with me so uh, i've always felt uh, it was a great teammate but also a better friend i mean the great thing about jewel you meet friends and you have them for life and so larry and i had that special relationship from coaching but also playing together and he was a superb player shared the ball could shoot and was always energetic is always positive and it was a joy for me to play with him. You played together for three years. He graduated in 67. You graduated in 66, correct? Correct. Uh, and also, you know, he told me that because he had suffered through the prostate thing before you, that uh, he, uh, you had several conversations then. Was he support for you at that point? Very much so. He gave me some good advice and information, and I've been able to pass that on to other men. In fact, any male who's listening, make sure that, especially age 50, you start having your prostate checked, and then... If it runs in the family, like I have two boys at age 40, we started them getting a yearly checkup, and it's a simple little blood blood work that they can do for a blood profile. So um, make sure men in the uh, in the audience, make sure that you take care of your health as you grow. Homer Drew is our guest here at halftime. The Cardinals are up by two against Bellarmine. You know, I mentioned to you I wanted to talk to you about the importance between athletics and academics and how one supports the other. You seem very enthusiastic about that. Could you tell me kind of your philosophy on that? You've been a coach and a player for so long. that, And I think the schools that I've been to kind of radiate that from uh, William Jewell, which always placed on the student athlete, and the same thing at Valparaiso University, which has a, a Lutheran base but very interdenominational. Um, about students and, and making sure your students first and athletes. And then now my, uh, my two sons who are both into coaching, which was not planned, but I thrilled because, Rick, they both love it. But anyway, uh, Bryce, our youngest, is at Vanderbilt. Our oldest, Scott's at Baylor. And both of them, it, it, they take care of the student, you know. So they work with them on the court and off the court, which makes their dad very proud of them. You hear all the time, and it's been prevalent with the investigations that have been going on in Louisville, for instance, but it doesn't have to be that way to be successful. I think you can have a great athletic program with a great academic program and, and do it the right way. You certainly can, and that's been proven uh, over time. And And I think when this all washes out, I think it'll be good for college basketball so that we can clean it up and get to rules that will really be equal and fair for everybody. What were some of the things you did toward that end when you were coaching to try to maintain the academics along with, obviously, you had great basketball teams? First thing was in recruiting. You want to find people who uh, are solid students, students who, uh, you know, are interested in getting a college degree. And if, if not, that they had a passion for basketball. And if anyone could get in, Rick, to that first round of the draft, then they need to go because the financial reward for all their hard work is definitely there and needs to be rewarded. So because you're they can okay always with the one back. and done thing? You're okay with that? Well, no, I'd like to see us change that we'll rule change it, uh, to more like the baseball, you know, with the three years and that. So, And, and I, I think the NBA is working with it. Now is a great time for the NBA, for NCAA, uh, Division One, especially uh, basketball, and AAUs to all get together with the administration of their schools 
and and to come up where everyone compromises to come up with something that is better for the student as they come through uh, playing basketball. So I'm really hoping that something positive will come out of that. Omer Drew, a 1966 graduate of William Jewell College, is our guest at halftime. Cardinals are up by two points against Bellarmine. Would you? What do you think of this game and uh, the way Coach Holly managed it with all those fouls? Whoa, I tell you, the fouls. At one time, as you and I looked up, Rick, it was 10 to 5. 10 oh. fouls on us and only 5 on them. And the difference is, is Bellamere getting to the free throw line. Oh. And they've only missed one free throw. And we w- we're shooting 100%, but we only got there <laughs> once, I think, if I remember right. So free throws and fouls were critical, and they're going to be critical for Jewel, especially in the second half, because we need to keep our players you know, on, 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 on the court. The other thing is, if you look across, Bud Fisher played with Larry Holly and myself, and <laughs> right. he was our center, okay. you know, at 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, and he could still rebound. So we may bring him in in the say. second half to help Jewel get some board strength in there. Well, it's either him or me, and I, you don't want me in there. I know that. <laughs> you look like you could still play. Do no, you? I don't think. I would need five screens to get a shot off. <laughs> but maybe, maybe that way, but... The thing I like, Larry has done a wonderful job with a small group. They play five guards, and, yes. and their defense is aggressive. They help cover for one another. Uh, I've been very impressed with both teams on the intensity uh, on both ends, on defense especially, that they really get after it, and they help and recover one another. And if we can just maintain rebounding um, and keeping them off their offensive board, which means we get our defensive rebounds, I think we have a great opportunity to upset um, in the second half part of the game. Homer Drew is our guest, the Hall of Famer at William Jewell College. Coach, we, now that you're not coaching anymore, do you sit in the stands like today, kind of coach the game in your head? You, As a coach, yes. You look and you still see 10. You don't just see the ball and who's guarding him, but you see the 10 and how they move together and how they orchestrate together. Because that, that teamwork is what I love about the game of basketball. One person cannot win the game, but it takes a five on the floor at one time working together on offense and defense. Offense sharing the basketball, penetrating, getting to the open man, and then on defense it's critical that if I'm guarding you, Rick, and you get by me, I have someone there to help me. And so that's what I love about the game of basketball teaches teamwork. And in life, you know, this is learning to get along with people. You know, that's so critical in the day and age that we live in. Stop me if I'm wrong, but I think you have the distinction of you retired twice at, at Valpo, and you had your son Scott took over for you, and then later on you came back and Bryce took over for you the second time. Is that right? Has that, that ever is, happened before? That is correct. The uh, first time, um, uh, Scott was my assistant for nine years, and he was ready to become a head coach, and so uh, he became head coach, and I became assistant to the president for, for that year. Then the start of Scott's second year, Baylor University came open. And it came open late because of what was going on on the campus. And so he didn't get the job until the end of August when when Valpo had already started. So we talked with the president. We decided since I recruited him, most of the players anyway, and knew the, the, the parents and that, that, that I would just jump back in. So it really worked out well. And then... Um, Bryce played, uh, and of course, led us to the Swig 16, and then um, played six years in the NBA. And so the timing came that he was winding down his NBA career and wanted to try coaching. So I said, well, come and try it. And so he was my assistant for six years. And so the second time I did stay retired. Right. right. Well, to, to now. You yeah, know, that's right. right. That's true. <laughs> Somebody told me that Scott was a tennis player in college. Is that true? He Didn't was. play basketball? He was a tennis player. In fact, our, our family has always enjoyed tennis um, uh, as they were growing up. And in fact, uh, Bryce didn't have a tennis lesson and played on the high school tennis team and went down to state in tennis. And then Scott was awful good, so he was the first one. So he started getting myself and, and Bryce more interested in tennis along with their sister Dana. So, right. uh, But he did play in college and was, was a competitor as he always grew up. He was, just enjoyed competing. And, of course, Bryce still on the highlights with the shot he made, uh, Mississippi State, correct, in 88? Ole Miss, Ole but Miss. you were okay. close. That's well. okay. You were close in 98. And, and oh, 98. I'm way that's at, okay. Yeah, sorry about that. All I know is I cannot tell you where 20 years of my life just, I mean, it just went by so quick. So 
people in the audience, all you Jew fans, enjoy every day because it goes by quick. Life well, just goes quick. Well, was that that spring? Was that your highlight run? Was that the one you'll always remember? Uh, well, we went like eight or nine times, and that was the deepest run that we had. And, and I guess it was special, Rick, from the standpoint that you had a son playing and a son coaching. So it was not only a team, but it also became a nice family uh, run for all of us. So feel very blessed that that all came together. Again, Homer Drew is our coach. You can see his picture on our Hall of Fame and uh, take a look at some of the old pictures from when he played for William Jewell College, went on to Valpo, several other places, uh, including LSU. You worked with Dale Brown there, right? Very good, yeah. And yes. several others. Uh, but I think, I and just meeting you for the first time today, I probably don't have the right to ask this. I'm going to anyway. You can punch me or whatever. But, but I'd like you to talk a little bit about what you left behind what you would like people to think of you uh you know through the years and and what i guess is your legacy especially when it comes to william jewell wow met a lot of good friends good uh people at william jewell uh learned from coaches we had coach patterson coach nelson at the, at the time that larry and i and and bud fisher went went through so we had good mentors we also had uh really the friendship the men and women on, on the campus uh, were very enjoyable and I and I guess as is, is, is I look back on my coaching career you know I hope I was an encourager because I wanted our players to be successful on the court because winning helps a good mental outlook for just life not that you have to win every game but it's nice to win and then uh, the, the second thing is off the court really wanted to see and one of the things that kept me in college was that you come in as a freshman and you're starry-eyed and you're wondering where do I go to class, you know, and where am I, uh, what time do I need to get to bed, do I need to brush my teeth, you know. And then as a senior, they, they graduate and they have a, a confidence, you know, to go out into the world, into the community to be productive. And so I've always enjoyed that transformation of freshman to senior. Yeah. Coach, I wish we had more time. It's been a thrill and one that I've waited a long time to meet you. And I'll tell you to your face, you're as good as Coach Ollie said that you would be. So yeah. it's, a, it's a pleasure to meet you, and thank you for spending time with us on God the air. God bless you, and God bless everybody from William Jewell. Right. Let's get second half here. Let's get this one. All right, Coach Homer Drew is our guest. It's the High V Halftime Report, and we'll be back with more in a moment. <laughs> 